around the world, it seems, whether in a democracy or a dictatorship, people are rising up. We've seen it in Turkey recently, in the United States with the Occupy movement, and of course throughout the Middle East with the Arab Spring. And now it's happening in Brazil. An explosion of discontent is rocking the country, as hundreds of thousands have taken to the streets of cities across the country, demanding more from their government. These mass protests are far larger than those we saw in Turkey last week, and they've taken the Brazilian government, as well as the rest of the world, by surprise. It's a world, of course, used to Brazil's carnival atmosphere, and its soccer fame, and its growing global clout. What started as anger over bus fare hikes has morphed into discontent about paying high taxes for what many see as inadequate public services, education and health care, as well as corruption and the billions of dollars that are pouring into projects for the upcoming World Cup and the Olympics, money, many say, that would have been better spent on improving living standards. But instead of turning on the protesters, Brazil's president Dilma Rousseff, a former leftist guerrilla who once herself was imprisoned and tortured, has embraced them. Brazil awoke stronger today. The greatness of the demonstrations yesterday proves the importance of democracy. Now, the Brazilian government has ordered federal riot police special forces into the streets to contain the protest, and another big one is planned for tomorrow. So now my exclusive interview with Brazil's foreign minister, Antonio Patriota. He joined me from Oslo to discuss why a growing middle class in Brazil seems to have turned on its government and what his government plans to do about it. Foreign Minister Patriota, thanks for joining me from Oslo. Thank you very much, Christiane. Let's try to get to the bottom of what's happening in your country. There have been large protests since last week. Now, your president, Rousseff, has said that this actually shows the strength of democracy. She's actually embraced them. And yet there are reports now of the government sending federal special police to major cities to contain the protests. Why are you doing that? The president has uh, set the tone for the reaction of the government. She has said that Brazil has risen a stronger nation after the protests. Uh, her government, along with that of President Lula before her, has brought millions out of poverty. We are eliminating extreme poverty in Brazil. Millions have joined the middle class. And it's natural that uh, rising living conditions should give rise to uh, higher expectations. But why then, if this is all legitimate, are special riot police, federal police, being sent to five major cities? I guess my question is, are you not afraid of seeing the same kind of, of, of violence and confrontation that, for instance, Turkey has seen over the last couple of weeks? Well, I think it's a different situation. Um, the manifestations have been peaceful, uh, predominantly. There may be episodes of violence here and there, and of course the security forces have to be prepared uh, because there are large numbers of, uh, of people involved. Uh, but by and large, this has not been the case, and our expectation is that they will continue to manifest in a peaceful way. Uh, Brazil, uh, the Brazilian government has gone out of its way to reach out to civil society, and it's natural uh, that uh, individuals uh, or in groups uh, should wish to participate in the democratic debate concerning the future of the country. So let's um, get the to the government will rise to the challenge in a peaceful way also. Well, let's see what the government will do in terms of policy, because at the heart of the matter is the fact that Brazilians pay amongst the highest taxes in the world, and that clearly these protesters have said that they're not getting their money's worth. They're very concerned that they're not getting the social services that they feel they're paying for. We know that this started because of a hike in bus fares by several cents. But like many of the protests we've reported on over the years, it has mushroomed. What are the policy, I suppose, I suppose changes that will enable Brazilians to feel that they are getting uh, the education that they need, the health care that they need, the services that they, that they want for the taxes they pay? It is true that the protests started with a uh, rise in uh, transportation prices. Uh, so this issue is being dealt with as well. Uh, but I think the reaction is a positive one. It's one of uh, responding to the manifestations by saying, we, we want to be attentive to your voices. We want to hear your voices. Uh, your voices will be taken seriously. Civil society has a right to manifest. Let's see what we can do together. 
So what can you do together? Because clearly, you know, over the last several years, Brazil had an exemplary economic growth. It was, it was huge compared to so many other countries. And as you say, millions, tens of millions of people were raised out of poverty and into the middle class. Now, that growth has slowed down over the last uh, couple of years quite significantly. And it appears that the people are, you know, having been risen to the middle class and now feeling that, you know, they don't have the protections in place and they see their position in jeopardy. What is the structural changes that you have to uh, put in place to protect the middle class and make sure that it is a strong structural middle class for the future? Brazil today has a situation of nearly full employment, which is quite in contrast with many economies in the developed world, in Europe, for example. Um, and as I was saying, you know, these rising standards of living have given um, place to a new set of expectations. And this is, I think, the central message of the manifestations. Uh, they will be taken on board. Um, of course, uh, it is important that the manifestations continue to be peaceful, as they have been up to now. And uh, the government will continue to uh, promote these improvements in the social services. Very attentive to these voices, as I've said, because they are voices that uh, also reflect a very vibrant democracy. And uh, as you know, uh, we have struggled in Brazil to um, obtain the democracy that we have today. And those in power, such as President Dilma herself, who was imprisoned during the years of military dictatorship, will ensure that all voices that have legitimate claims will be heard. And finally, some Brazilians are calling for a boycott of the World Cup. What do you make of that? Well, uh, I think it's uh, democratic to voice different uh, opinions about any phenomenon that is taking in your country. Uh, but I believe that, by and large, Brazil be it remains uh, very enthusiastic when it comes to soccer, soccer tournaments, um, and it will be a big success in 2014. Foreign Minister Antonio Patriota, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much, Christiana.